How fast can you black border end of the road in Bloom CD6? If you've been following this series closely, it has been a little over a month since I've done the last one on balance. We're level 123, we have tons of monkey money, and we have a time to beat of two hours and 16 minutes on cubism, with Sulphur Springs and an intermediate map being two hours and 20 minutes being second place. I love End of the Road, and it's one of my favorite maps in Bloom City 6, so I think we're going to go as fast as we possibly can, and I'm actually going to be starting with Adora. I think once we get to hard mode, we'll switch over to Sada, but to start this off, to go through all the beginner modes, it's going to be Adora because she is actually super strong, even though I don't really want to admit it because she's not one of my favorite heroes, she is pretty good. Now, switching heroes mid-run isn't the safest idea to go fast, but if you can just pay attention and do it quick enough, it really doesn't hurt our overall time. What hurts our time the most is obviously going to be losing, so we do not want to be doing that. But let's jump right in. Let's hit this timer, get it going, and hit play, and place our Dora down right there. That's not the fastest start, but I think it'll work. Now, I really like this map because the balloons come back quickly. So if you do make a mistake and one happens to slip by, it's not going to completely ruin your game because it only has to go here and come back. So if it's like a fast balloon or a fast Moab, you can get it right again. See right there, we almost lost a couple, but it's going to come back relatively quickly. Now, in the beginning, we just don't want that to happen so we're gonna blast the door's ability we're gonna get like a crossbow here i think that'll be pretty good all of the beginner ones are gonna be super simple now i always like to change things up i don't want to use sada every single time i don't want to use the druid every single time but since i have taken a pretty long break of over a month i would like to come back this at full steam ahead and see if we can make it one of our fastest times yet so I do want to rely on some strategies that we're used to. One thing I think I might want to use today is going to be attack because attacks are just great. Especially right here. If you put attack, an alchemist, a village, and an ice and brittle, dude, nothing's going to get past that thing. It's going to be ridiculous. Now, Adora's weakness is purple balloon. She cannot pop purples to save her life. Like literally can't pop any of them. So we need to make sure that this guy can, which she can. So we got lead covered. We got camo covered. And honestly, I think like the fastest way to do this is probably just to get like never miss targeting or just a sniper right here pointed straight at the front, barrel down the center and just blow through everything. Now, I want to say I've grown as a player since the last one. So I think we're going to really step it up this time. I'm going to feel it like I'm my mind is focused. I'm not going to make dumb mistakes. I'm saying that now. Hopefully I'm not biting my tongue later, but I don't want to do silly mistakes where we click the wrong thing or we don't get to the map or we click the wrong game mode and things like that really really kind of stall it up and that's what I'm trying to avoid. Another thing is I don't want to do is lose on half cash. I always tend to lose on half cash or I used to lose on Apocalypse, but now Apocalypse is pretty easy because you get that end of the round cash. So I don't see that being an issue, but I really, really, really want that sweet time of 216. I want to beat that time. Cubism is top like three favorite maps so it makes sense that I did the best on it but I think we can beat it I think we really can now a couple weeks ago I did a poll and I asked what's your favorite beginner map or what's the best beginner map out of monkey meadow cubism into the road and logs and sadly enough into the road only got four percent as expected cubism got the most because that's one of my favorite maps too followed by monkey meadow but I didn't expect it to be so overloaded and into the road be so low what don't you like about this map? I love that you can throw a million farms on this thing and just make everything awesome and easy and fast. And honestly, just the farming. The farming makes it really fun because you can throw tons and tons and tons of farms on here. See, I'm already doing it, already doing it. We gotta go beginner, one, two, three, four, four. Oh my gosh, okay, that's already slowing us down. I think we're just gonna go intermediate and click back one. I think that's gonna be the fast way to do this. But do you agree with that? Would you say cubism is the best beginner map or would you say end of the road is a little bit better than cubism? It's the simplicity of this map that does it for me. I like that it's just a basic neutral color, a light brown, and I like that there's so much open space. But as far as beginner maps go, cubism is way more beginner than this one because this one you get caught up a lot. Like let's say we had a tax shooter here, but we're getting overwhelmed on 98. He's going to hit all these ones, but then miss the ones that are leaving the track. Not a lot of beginner maps have that. Like beginner maps have several different spots to hit the balloons at. But this one, yes, it's more than one because you do get that back turn. But when it gets overwhelmed, a lot of these towers that hit that pierce cap and you just get dunked on and all of them just leave the track and wave you later, you know? 
But none of that matters. We're experienced Bloons players by this point. We have black bordered 31 maps. Today is going to be our 32nd black border, knocking out every single game mode. So we've learned a few things, right? So it doesn't matter if it's a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced map, unless it's Pat's Ponder geared, because those are impossible to beat for me for some reason. But we got them all. And what I would like to try soon is the newer map Revenge Castle or Castle Revenge. I was able to beat it on chimps, but it just took a lot, a lot of patience. So that one, I can't wait to do. Just got to clean it up a little bit. But I really like the whole lore behind everything they're doing. For instance, you got Ravine, which is out front of the castle for Dark Castle, right? And it's kind of like right at the front of it. You got the little moat around your castle. And then you got Dark Dungeons, which is inside the Dark Castle. And now you have castle revenge which the castle dark castle just said forget it i'm leaving i'm done with this we're gonna get out of here to fight these balloons off and then it just leaves it's literally just moving down the, the road over there let me know if you agree with that lore i think that's what's going on there and if i've missed any other maps that kind of coincide with those now if you've been with my channel for some time you would know that adora is one of my least favorite heroes just because she is kind of expensive she can't pop purples but when they came out with this skin for her, the Voidora, I think this is top tier. Like top three Bloon skins in the entire game for sure. She looks so good in this skin, which is weird because I think Joan of Arcador is like one of the worst skins in the game. So it's such a contrast. Now I know some people are gonna like that, probably hate on the comments, but I, I just don't like it. You know, it just there's things I don't like and that's one of them. <laughs> but what is your favorite Adora skin? Regular Adora? Joan of Arcadora or Voidora? Was there a fourth? There's not a fourth one, right? I'm not missing one. But we're already done with primary only, I think, right? Yeah, there's the mob. We're done. That was super simple. So we're going to try to actually hit advanced or intermediate and then go back one. That's way faster. Let's just do that. Oh my goodness. And then for deflation, I think what we'll do, we'll just do it the old fashioned way and we'll just win. We'll put this one down and then we'll put this one down and then we'll start with that. And then we'll start, we'll hit play. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get a camo so we don't mess that up. We'll go like this, we'll go like this, there we go. Now the reason I didn't just go with the tried and true crossbow masters, because I think we can move a little bit faster. The crossbow master is just one tower, and this is definitely more than one tower, so I think we can knock it out. I'm a little worried about like the later 50s, but I think with this one here we should be chilling, and this guy is a cleanup, nothing's getting past his bow. Now one thing I recently learned about Adora, well not recently learned, like I knew about it, I just didn't know the extent of it, but she has that sacrifice power. And I've been playing a lot of that phase one boss quest, which is really, really fun. And I was able to actually get to 172 takedowns on that boss, which was just so cool to me. I thought that was so much fun, but I was using Adora to buff up my temple. After I did the whole cool secret Adora temple com combination thing where I upgrade the temple and it makes her upgrade too once she's level 20, I would sacrifice a fourth tier ninja which would just make the temple that much stronger for a really good amount of time. And it was just such a cool thing to see that if you have tons of money and you're going late game, but see, that's the thing though. Like how often are you going late game? Like, is it that much fun to do it all the time? No. So it's a one-off thing for like the phase one quest. So that's why Dora's cool, but not the greatest, right? But honestly, if she was cheaper, I would use her a little bit more too, because it's just like for hard mode, I can't start off with her. So we'd have to do some weird start with like attack and a dart up here to like kind of clean up everything. And I don't want to do that when you can just start with Sada, put her right here and she will carry through the first like 15 rounds just because we're starting off on a bend. You can't beat that. Like a door is strong. Yeah, but she's just not too, she's not cheap enough yet. I think Crossbow Master actually would have been a better play. I've seen a lot of Moabs kind of make it a little too far out. Um, maybe I can like do this and sacrifice that one and give a little bit of a buff. I don't no, I thought that worked out a little bit better than it could have. But now he's got an intermediate back one, end of the road, poopy round border, onto medium. Let's do it. I think I can use her for that. Does she still? Nope. See what I'm saying here? Now I got to do some weirdo stuff with this to start off each time. And that's why we're going to change up on her. Dang, that's a bummer. I mean, this isn't the worst start, so it's not like it's going to completely like ruin my day. Because we're trying to go for speed, so saving up for a hero that's not been that gives me money just seems a little odd. See right there, almost, I feel like I was a little behind, but maybe not. Now, I might be crazy with this one. Let me know what you think, but I feel like Sada should be heavily nerfed. I feel like she's just too good, and so everybody I compare her to, it's never going to compete, right? Because she's just cheaper, and after a certain, and she can immediately pop camo. And then after a while, she can pop lead. Her ability can take down the innards of a Moab with one click. 
And so it's just, to me, she's just too strong. So you think like, oh, let's use Etienne. Why? You can just use Sada. Let's use Adora. Why? You can just use Sada. And that kind of goes through my head every single time, which kind of stales up these runs for me in a way because I just constantly use her. Because if you're trying to actually go for speed and get it done as quickly as you can, why not use the best in which case she is? I know I sound like a fanboy, but prove me wrong. Like she's cheap. She pops everything under the sun and her ability is just perfect. I'm going with this strategy for this, and I just consider this like a mean strategy. And by that, we're just gonna put as much stuff up front as we can that can just tear up this stuff and keep it rolling. And if you put tax at the very front, no, it's not the most efficient, but it just feels like you're just being mean, you know? You're just getting in there and just doing some dirty work. And I love that about that, because <laughs> it's a straight line, and you're just not even letting the balloons see the light of day. As soon as they barely touch it, he's popping out the sides, all sides of his corners and everything, and boom! Now I gotta think a little bit ahead here because next is military only and none of these towers are a great start. Boat's good, but it's all the way back here. And so we're gonna be wasting a lot of time. And since we can't start with Adora, I think this is the time to start with Sada or Quincy or just anybody that can handle a couple rounds on their own because I don't wanna start with a boat. That's way too long for him to get all the way back there. A dartling can't do it. It'll take too long. A mortar, eh, rather just close my eyes. And a plane's a little random. Now we could drop a sub and a sniper, like a sniper right here, and then a sub with advanced intel, but that's gonna cost a lot too and it won't be a good start. It won't be a fast start anyway. But I do feel guilty about it. You guys gotta let me know below. Is it okay to keep using Sada? I just feel like she's too OP and it just, ugh. But we wanna go fast. So you guys let me know if I should keep changing it up like this, but I am gonna change for right now just cause I wanna have the fastest run possible at this time. And so that didn't really take long at all. That really was not a waste of time. I like that a lot. Maybe we can switch back, but for this one we need her cause right here, this is what we're looking for. Cause we only have 650 bucks, I believe, right? And this would be 200. And then a sniper's 550 and then we have to pay 130 and then 500 yeah so we would have lost a couple of seconds of time letting the balloons make it all the way down to the sub i'm not i'm not about that life right now we're about speed have you ever noticed that advanced intel airburst darts triple guns they're all great but they're not the fastest we are seeing the balloons because we have to see one through sada before we can actually start popping them so, I mean, technically we should put like a sniper here and it'll, it'll shoot faster, but still, we're still going to see them because he's all the way back here. So it does take time for his stuff to get to the other side. Now we're talking like we're splitting hairs here. These are probably nanoseconds we're technically wasting, but I'm just throwing it out there that we probably could even go faster if we had a better tower. I'm even thinking never miss targeting the same way. It has to see them first, right? Like attack just knows they're there. <laughs> you put it out there and it's good. But already we have everything covered. There's our lead. There's our camo, there's also our camo, there's just our, you know, general balloon popping, and then Sada has her ability, which technically should, we should be using her ability more, right? Because it would speed things up. But at the same time, I think just a bottom path sniper will handle everything, except for round 59. I always forget 59 with Sada, and it's just a bunch of camo leads. She can't pop lead yet, and so we just get kind of dunked on. But for this one, I think it'll be just as simple as using her ability or going with like a... Maybe just a middle path sniper, like up to a fourth tier maybe, but that's a lot of money. You know what I've been running tests on a lot lately too, is the collection events, because I always play on an expert map on Impoppable if I can. There's a few maps that I can't beat on expert, unfortunately, on Impoppable, but all the ones that I can, I do. And I always, always, always waste a lot of time because I try to rush for farms and I try to have four farms by round 40 and then I try to get them to marketplaces before 50. And next thing I know, I'm losing on ouch because I don't have enough defense. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to do all this. I'm just really not going to farm. I'm going to make sure I have a solid defense that can get past the 40s and even into the 50s. For instance, like a sub with an alchemist and a village and some cleanup. And then I'll start farming. And sure enough, I didn't have enough money for everything that I wanted by like 63 and stuff. But I was still sufficient. And I didn't waste a bunch of tries trying to find the perfect time to farm. With that said, I'm kind of want to roll that into these runs because I'm always so obsessed with farming. Like on Impoppable, we still need to farm really hard because the more money you have, the more towers you can buy, which means the faster you can roll, right? So nothing's changed in that regard. But what I'm saying is I don't think we should just like, just try so hard to farm 
when our defenses aren't the best they should be just yet. There's like a happy medium that we need to find so we can roll as fast as we possibly can and then we start farming like madmen. Like, I don't think right now is even the best time to farm because you saw that Moab get too far. Once, yeah, see, look, at that's too far for me. Once we get Elite Defender, now we're barely even going to see Moabs. Now, I should be using Sada's ability to help clean these things up a lot faster. I just forget sometimes. I don't like doing ability jamming too. Like, for those of you who do follow this as a guide, let me know by saying, I use this as a guide. But for those of you that do, I don't like to use abilities too much because then, trust me, I've tried to use guides before and you're just like, oh my goodness, I can't keep track of all the times you've used abilities. But luckily for what we're doing, we don't need to use abilities. We're just using them to make them go faster so you don't have to. If you're just trying to beat these as a game mode, don't worry about it. But see, now I'm kind of happy with what I see of the Moabs. We don't really see much of them, which is really, really nice. But I do still want to go a little bit faster, so let's do this too. Let's send this guy out, because he's a constant, like, just flare, right? So he doesn't shoot advanced intels like this guy. He's always ready to party, which is nice. And I think on 60, oh man, it's too late now, but we, what we should have done is we should have used the boat and just pulled it down. That would have been great, but, you know, can't win them all. We're going to go intermediate, back one, end of the road, medium, and then we're on Apocalypse. Okay, so perfect for Sada. She was built for this one, for sure. Now, I want to move her up to the front, but you can't because she might lose a balloon because she doesn't have this cool little bend here. But then after everything I just said, my speech about farming, like, I want to, like, rush a farm on Apocalypse. So if you have a farm on Apocalypse, you make money so much faster, and it's just awesome. Next thing you know, you're just rich. You're rich, and you can do anything, and this thing just ends. Like, all of a sudden, it ends. Like, the fastest game mode you've ever seen in your life. And how do you not like the perfect creases and squares for farms? I can fit another one here and then two perfectly under each other. There's so much room for farms, it's great. This is where my greed kicks over. Nothing's gotten past Sada to this point, but I know that just going for an extra $400 here, like as soon as I click this marketplace and upgrade it, they're all of a sudden gonna be too overwhelming for us because that's just usually how this rolls. But I just felt like if I bought this now, we're gonna be just golden. We can just chill and just buy stuff and just go as fast as we possibly can. We have two camos here. I went with the middle path dart just because he's pretty strong with things. And we are gonna have problems with regrows. So I think I should put attack here. We don't have any lead popping, do we? Oh, that's not good. Let's do this one then. We'll buy hot shots to start because now our lead's covered, our camo's covered. See, we're starting to get overwhelmed. A blue balloon made it through. Oh my goodness. Even with that farm there, we probably should have bought in a second farm, but or just bought in a better defense first, like I always talk about. Maybe a sub in the back would be cool too, because then if things do get through, he'll help clean them up as well. But I really do think once I get overdrive here, everything will be kind of chilling. And then I'll get a village, which will make everything not regrow anymore, which will be nice. I'm not sure why, but this just feels really slow. Even with the farm here, it's made us $8,600, but I feel like I've just been like trailing money and it's just taking forever. And we're only on round 37. But at any moment, I always feel like it's just going to start getting overwhelming because usually the Moabs start flying out like crazy. But maybe we just have more money than we usually do. And we're used to tons of regrows and things making all the way through and we panic. But right now, I feel like it's just going to end on us. We're not even going to know what's happening because I think with this one, a ring of fire. OK, now no balloons going to touch us. I think, yeah, Moabs are dead because of the alchemist there. And if I throw on an embrittlement, I might as well just be asking to like just to end it now. Just be done. And why not? Let's just be a little even more mean and get another one here. So if anything does happen to pop out, let's Alk buff everybody just because why not? Let's just get some random stuff going here. This might be one of the easiest. I don't know if it's the fastest. I mean, it's we're going as fast as we possibly can, but this just feels way too easy right now. And we could also get the new and improved summon Phoenix if we have enough money for that, which we do because I could just sell this. There we go. Now we have an ability and we have a double flamed Phoenix and a fire dude and all of this dude apocalypse is should be on easy mode now it's a little ridiculous ever since they gave you end of round cash we're just flowing in the money and we had zero troubles with this and it just ends it just ends out of nowhere that's crazy now we are on oh we still have one more reverse man i i want i do not like reverse versus the worst one so i guess i'll have to put her here now just in case yeah just to be safe we'll also put a dart here and then we'll put a tack here let's maybe we can clean this up a little quicker it's funny because on chimps mode, I like to have as least as many towers possible when I make a strategy just because I don't like clutter. But then when you're going for speed, clutter is just, it's synergy because all of these work so well together. This guy's popping the purples so then he doesn't lose his flame. 
flame breath is just awesome in general. We got Sada for generally everything. And then we have a sub back here for cleanup and also just some damage mayhem. And I threw in this guy too because I was knew I'd have a little bit of troubles with those leads early on. And that Moab wasn't the fastest takeout, but it definitely wasn't the slowest. So I'm kind of loving the cluttery mess. And guess what I haven't used? A Druid. I still have a theory that the Druid is a slower tower. I know y'all are saying it won't, but it just seems that it is because sometimes it takes a second to like suck down it with its vines. Like if it takes a lead, it goes wah, 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 wah. And that, that takes a second. I feel like it does. Like we're moving so fast right now. We're going to be like three minutes ahead of schedule of normal. And I think that is so cool because I don't know if it's because we're not using the Druid. I'm just saying in general, like we're going fast, but I feel like the Druid's slow. So I'm going to try not to use it today. See, and this is what I need to work on too. Like I always just save my abilities. I should be using the Phoenix every time it's available just because it will speed things up. It's a great ability to have just for general. It shoots outside of the screen and makes things so much easier. Look, it'll be the first to attack. It's kind of like the Spectre. So it just takes everything out. And then I really do need to practice doing this more too for speed using the hook grapple hook to take down round 60 there's no reason to fight a bfb even though it only takes a second we can save a nanosecond by just pulling the thing now sometimes your defense is so good it breaks it open beforehand but as long as i watch like that boom look at instant now it took some time to get to my little boat but i don't think it's that big of a deal silver border here we come hard mode standard Sada in the front because she's way too she's 585 now oh because we have monkey knowledge it's like why is she even cheaper than she's ever been but that is because of monkey knowledge that does not happen on chimps mode. I know I use a dart monkey, but what if it'd be better to use the free glue gunner instead? Because then she would be able to actually take down everything, even like round 15, because all the pinks would just slow down and she could just handle the whole game. Now I'm going to try to avoid using towers like pen on the engineer because I feel like that slows things down because it freezes them there. Ice obviously freezes unless you go with like embrittlement. There's so many things in my head that are probably like not actually true, but I think they are. So I make them up in my head, but this one, I think a plane or a helicopter would be good too, right? Just like right here, lock it in place. Look at that strength. That is some beautiful strength. I need to like line it up perfectly though. So it's like down the track, not shooting up it like right there. Perfect. Look at that. That is beautiful. And that's only dual darts. That's not even quad darts. I feel like we will, I feel like we'll be able to knock down even more, right? Yeah. Look at that go, but aren't we missing some? We need to have like have it there, right? Okay. But now it's shooting up. That doesn't even make any sense. Just let it be, let it do its thing. Dude, this thing's a powerhouse. I got it up to faster firing and it's like, we barely see the balloons. They're just in for a second before he shreds them all. I have noticed too, that the plane or the helicopter, sorry, I always mix them up. I don't know why they're different things, but I always feel like the helicopter is better if you just lock it in place than it is if you put it on pursuit because pursuit, he's going to like do this little jiggle thing or he's going to move towards the front, move towards the side. And he just never goes where you need him to. And then he ends up losing balloons. And next thing you know, you're actually going around this bin here that you don't need to do. So I think we're good of what we got. We're not the fastest lead poppers and our camo's a little slow. Maybe we'll add like this one for now. So we got everything covered. We got lead, just general popping. And I just want to farm a little bit more so we don't have to worry about like round 60s and 70s. We can go as fast as we can with like specters and stuff. See, I'm going to try it out for 36. And actually, he's not doing bad. It just, I don't like the look of it. It just kind of freaks me out because he's doing so much moving around. He just reminds me of a, of a, of just a crazy person. Just bouncing all over the place. We don't need to see that. But now we have Raider Rotors, which is pretty good. So now we got lead covered really well. We have camo. Yeah, good enough. But now round 40, I don't think we're going to take out as is. So I think we should actually throw in one of my guys right here. Oh, can we get Dragon's Breath by this one or no? We'll just have to use Sada's ability. I didn't really plan for that one, huh? I kind of messed that up. But we'll just use Sada's ability. There we go. That really wasn't that bad at all, actually. That was really good. Now tell me this isn't just beautiful. Look at these greatly placed banana farms. I love End of the Road for this reason. You can just set them so nicely. There's really not that many maps that you can place like four or six or even eight beautifully placed farms are always like a little jagged like on monkey meadow you know it's just not where you want it to be cubism yeah cubism is great but i don't like the line of the map goes like this instead of like this on this one so you have like a clearly sanctioned line i just think i'm so weird about that stuff just let me tell you i, I love cubism for the straight lines there's not one curve in the whole map which is great but i also think it's weird because the line goes down the side like that instead of through the middle but I think a solid mid game strat is to go with the summon Phoenix because just 
even without the Phoenix, his base power is just stronger. He's just really good. And I think it's because of that mustache. And then we'll grab a deadly precision to clean up those ceramics. And I think Moab should go down pretty quickly. Ah, oh, that wasn't fast enough. I mean, that wasn't terrible. But I, like I said, I'm going to start using this ability too whenever I can just to get as many pops as fast as possible. And then we need something else that'll take out the Moabs because that was just, that was wonky. Let's just be dirty with it. Let's just put this right here. Oh my goodness. And if we get spike mines too, that's just mean. That's just straight mean to those Moabs. Yes, that's what I like to see. And let's make everybody faster. There we go. Like normally you wouldn't put a spike mine to the front like that. But like I said, we're just being mean about it. Now I didn't really plan 63 out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Phoenix and then another Phoenix and then Sada's ability. And that should clean it up really quick. I know we're not going to lose to it. And we only need to really worry about that third rush because that's what makes the round end. If we do the first one kind of slow, it really doesn't matter. The second one, same thing. So I think what we'll do now is now we'll double Phoenix and then that'll just kind of go through it. And then when that third rush comes, it, yeah, that was so cool. Oh, that was cool. I like seeing that kind of stuff. Look how fast we're going now. Use Sada's ability because we can whenever I can. I think this is the first time I didn't have like an actual setup for 63. Like this obviously is a setup, but what I mean is like we usually have a fifth tier by now. We have a sub commander or an Apache and we're just ready for 63. But that was just like the first time we just said, nah, let's just, let's just attack it. Now I haven't seen a balloon in a long while. And I think that is so cool. I'd like to get to the Apache prime for 48,000, but these only sell for 20,000 total. Actually, we're not far off. Actually, we just need another $8,000. $10,000. But we can always do this just to go as fast as we possibly can. Oh, we actually don't have enough. Okay, come on. What are you doing here, buddy? Making me look bad in front of my friends. Okay, there we go. There we go. We're good. We're good. We got an Apache Prime. That's a little ridiculous for hard mode, but I'll take it. We don't have to do anything else, too. We could use our ability if we want to just to go even faster, but we're good. And I think I have a new idea for Impoppable, too. I have a new tower I kind of want to go with. And if you could guess based off what you see here let me know below but i think the tower you would never expect to put in the front of the map is going to take over on impoppable so i did it again though i should have used this one for around 80 and i didn't think about it so maybe i can sell these and then buy oh actually i can i can you're right okay i wasn't even that bad we have enough time for it and then as soon as that thing says round 80 we'll pull there we go pull Oh, I didn't hit the right button. Okay, it took longer than it would just to pop it, I feel like. But that doesn't matter. Intermediate, back one, into the road. There we go. Ah, it takes so long. For Magic Monkeys only, we always go Spirit. But I haven't used a Druid this whole time. And I really don't think we need to. This map is very easy. It has a lot of curves and turns and spins. So we might be able to still like get away with... Well, I want money. Yeah, I do want money. So Spirit would be good for that. And just the middle path in general would give us money. Like if I had a few of them. But we're going so fast, I don't want to risk it with my druid theory being correct. Oh, I need to buy something though, huh? Let's actually just get a ninja for now. Just keep it easy. Keep it simple. Make sure we don't lose any balloons and we can keep them all behind the screen. I forgot about lead on 28. Oh my goodness. What a dummy. Because Oh, I didn't forget about lead. I have drag. I have wall of fire. It's just not good enough. And this dude, why does he pull up the rug like that? That's so embarrassing. Your friends are watching, dude. Don't do that again. He does that so much like that tower is so unpredictable because of that. but now that we got dragon's breath we'll be okay and i'd preferably like to have summon phoenix by 40. and if you guys didn't know in the most recent update the phoenix has been given a double flame so right now he's shooting out like one fire bolt ball thingy and then once you get to summon phoenix he has two and the damage went up damage over time went up i believe so he's just a strong tower even without the ability because before i would only use summon phoenix if like i needed the ability right and because it automatically popped camo, even if you didn't have a camo upgrade, so it was great for challenges where they like hid the camo balloon kind of thing. But now that doesn't even work anymore. But now it's just an ultra strong tower. So that's why I think we can actually just carry this whole round with just a few of these. Just get like six of them. We can just use the summon Phoenix whenever we need to. I don't think we can afford six of them, but you get the gist. We could just run in there, summon Phoenix whenever we have a trouble. Boom, 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 boom. I hope we make it. We need like $800 right now to get summon Phoenix. I don't think it's going to happen. But I think we can break it open and just use Sada. So we'll be a little bit behind. Actually, just kidding. We're fine. Just use it. Call it a day. Okay, use Sada. That was actually really good. Okay. But just in case that happens again, I'm going to get a Bloom Jitsu and an Alchemist because I know that they're like perfect for cleanup. But I'm also going to use my Phoenix all the time because that's going to speed this thing up tremendously, like crazily. And I'd use Sada's ability more, but I don't even see the Bloom, so she won't even attack. It's so insane. 
So the Moabs aren't as fast as I'd like them to be, but I also don't have two summon Phoenixes. And now that I do, I think it should be pretty wicked. Yeah, that was pretty good. And then I'm actually gonna Alk buff this one. With this front side Alk buffed and then two summon Phoenixes up front like this, like this is insane. I'm gonna throw up another one, why not? Let's just see if this will just solo 63. I've never gone with this many fire things at all. Like I just, I find it kind of weird, but I like it. Like what if I just had like 70 of them? Like, you know, I feel like a whole entire end of the road with wall of fires would be sufficient, you know, take down most of this stuff just cause those are good. So adding not only dragon's breath, but a second one to get the summon Phoenix double flamethrower. Like that's pretty wicked. I hope this isn't a dumb choice, but I do have now three Phoenixes so I can take on each round of 63, like super simple. Oh, wrong button. Let's see what they do on their own. Cause like I said, it doesn't really matter about the first few. I don't even see it. Oh my God. That was that it was that let's just do all three though. Let's just be rude about it. So that third rush is going to be silly. And there it is. Silly 64 silly. Everything's gonna be silly. Cause we got flames. It seems to be a pretty solid strategy. Just kind of like sporadically using the Phoenixes, but not using them right away, like staggering them a little bit. So there's always one kind of going constant. Seems to be pretty good. I was trying to save up for a sun avatar here, but it just seems that it's just a little out of reach. I mean, we'll get it, but I don't know if it's really going to be that worth it. I was trying to think like, maybe I should just sell everything for a BMA for 80 because then it'll just take it down instantly. But I don't want that to be on my conscience. Oh my gosh, those purple balloons, seriously, purple balloons. That's what got me down at the last second there. I guess, yeah, we, only, we don't have any purple poppers besides her. That, that makes sense. But who cares? Who cares? We're kicking some butts. And I'm going to blast all three Phoenixes on 80 this time, just so we can get through it as quickly as possible. And we'll use Sada's ability. We'll use all three abilities, actually. There we go. Three abilities. That one. Use Sada, Sada, Sada. And then that one. There we go. That was super clean. I mean, that was one of the fastest Magic Monkeys only we've ever seen, to be honest. Double HP, another waste. It's kind of like a... What's that one we call it? Reverse. It's kind of like that. But, you know. We're gonna try this one a little different. We're gonna put the attack right there to where it does hit a little bit outside the track. We're gonna get faster shooting, more attacks, even more attacks and tax spray. And the reason why is I do wanna start farming kind of early because as you know, we need like a Moab assassin or a middle path boat to take down that Moab. Cause you just, there's no point in fighting it. Double HP is a lot, like you're doubling it, honestly. So if we can have a farm and sell it or have a farm and keep it, if we get it early enough that it makes us enough to like, that it actually pays for itself plus gives us profit, we'll be flying through this thing no problem. And then by 50, we should have a solid tower. Like even our spiked mines will do really, really good up front, which would be really cool. And then after around like 55, 60, when you start getting your really good towers going, double HP is literally no different than any other of them. But I would like to sp speed it up even more. Like I know in the past we've gone with the flying fortress, which just made it super, super dumb. And I feel like that's what we should do because it, that's the fastest way to take down double HP mob. Just get a flying fortress, it shreds everything. It doesn't care what HP it has, it's gone. So this is a solid little defense. We got our lead right up front. We got a little tax spray. It ain't doing the best, but it's getting there. And then we got an actual farm. So I'm only gonna have to sell this one, which is great, which will get us past that first Moab. And then we'll sell this guy too, because we really don't need a Moab assassin. I, I'm not the biggest fan of it, other than just for getting past round 40 on double HP Moabs. And honestly, I'm not even gonna have to sell it, am I? I can get both. That is crazy. That is so cool. I didn't have to sell it. That's awesome. And then we'll just make sure to use it. So I'm just gonna keep hitting it now constantly, even while I'm doing other things, just because I don't want to forget about it. And then we just get kind of dunked on with it. And as long as I have this sub here, we really, we don't even have to really worry about camo because the sub will bounce off a of Sada. We're doing really well. I'm going to get two more farms. If I can, we'll go right up to the middle one. I don't know if we have that monkey knowledge yet, but we should make $416 versus $400. If we have the right monkey knowledge, I think it's monkey knowledge, right? But it's only better to do that if you can buy it straight off. Like when you have to go like this, you're actually making more just by using the top path upgrade first. For now, I think this is a solid play for it as well. We got the balloon popping. We got the everything popping. Okay. I mean, again, not the fastest thing in the world, but it is pretty quick. And if I get an embrittlement though, I think those should be even quicker. I'm going to do this too. Cause I, I just feel like this is a solid way to make some money. We'll start farming a little bit better even. And then just even one of them will get us to that guy really, really quickly. I am a little worried about 63, but if I can get up a, a farm early like this, there we go. There's our banana research facility. Now we're actually making some good money here. And for 63, we don't care about 63 because we have this guy. So I think we're pretty good. We just got to worry about making that money. So I actually want to get rid of my sub because he's not in range of this cool little money village. So I'm going to sell this guy right now and then buy. Oh, it's 25. That was 21 for some reason. Oh, because it was on like medium mode, I think. 
Okay, there's our specter. There we go. And now these sell for 15 and 20, so $35,000. And I only need 82. So I need a, like 48,000 bucks. That's actually a lot, to be honest. I actually think I have it already. Yes, I do. Okay, that's what we're looking for. And then if I just get this one, the village, and some camo. Yeah, dude, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Do I have the winged monkey monkey knowledge yet? I can't believe that. I need to buy that. That's for sure. That's crazy. I don't even have it. If you don't know what winged monkey targeting is, it allows it just to follow. Like, I believe it's like the first balloon on the screen. So a lot of the times it's a little screwy, but it's just like if you were microing it, you can like go like, oh, I want to keep him up here at the front. Well, winged monkey just kind of does that for you, which is nice. But in this case, he's such a strong tower doing some strong things. I don't think it really matters. And just to make it dirty, let's add our spiked vines and then we'll rebuy the alk buff I sold to get it. There we go. I was going to buy a first strike and sell some stuff. But then I realized, what's the point? That thing's super strong, so it doesn't matter. And now with half cash, I don't see us losing. Now, I could always get a big head here and then lose, but I just don't see it happening. And then I think if I go like this and then maybe here, actually here, that's probably a better idea. What am I thinking, huh? And then get more tax. Luckily, the spikes on this one are so close to the front right there that they use up in the beginning. So you get that little extra boost. Okay, that's what I exactly didn't want. Oh, this is so gross. We haven't done this this entire run. We have made zero mistakes, really. And so for that to happen is really ugly. It's my fault, though. I guess I should have gone with the top path first. Or probably never bought in this tack at all. I should have just bought in Sada. Sells for 510, so I could just sell it right now and then just buy Sada right there. There we go. Why did I even mess with that? Her hack and slash is 10 times better than any stupid spikes gonna come out of that tack machine. I totally forgot though. Half cash has been giving us a lot of problems lately, hasn't it? I've been getting really stressed because I'll buy, I'll sell everything, buy Ultra Juggernaut and it can handle 63 but then can't handle 64. Or I'll try to buy a Crossbow Master but I don't have enough money. I totally forgot about that. So I need to buy a farm. Even though it's only gonna make us like an extra couple grand, that couple grand could make or break us, so I need to get going on it. And a crossbow would be great, it would handle everything. But I also think if I just had a few flames, that would be really cool too. I should have just gotten Ben. Oh my goodness, Ben has been updated too to where he gives you so much money, like so much money. By the end of round 100, if you're on Impoppable, he makes you over like $100,000. You really don't even need farms if you have a Benjamin now. So I don't know, I might hero switch back to Ben for Impoppable. I should have been using him for all of these, honestly. Oh, I didn't even think about that, what a dummy. I think at this point I'm losing a lot to this kind of stuff, so I am going to grab a sub here and then get it up to advanced intel just because it'll bounce off the banana farm and Sada, so it'll have two points of contact. And I am using her abilities pretty well, which is nice, so if I do lose one, it's not that biggest thing in the world. And there we go. I like this. Oh, lead. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to use Sada, aren't I? Dang it. I did not want to do that. So I'll just try to buy this if I can. Because Sada doesn't have enough for 28, I don't think, right? So, oh, the first one I can do, I just can't do 30 is what I, I think it is. I know we're going to sacrifice a little bit of time on 40 because honestly, we, I don't think we can really pop it down with what we got here. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I, I just think it's necessary because I do want the farms. I want to make the last half of the game very, very easy. And with this way, I can. Okay, that wasn't even that big of a deal. Honestly, that wasn't that big. And why do I feel like we're making more money than we should? Am I not on half cash? Like, am I... Am I messing up here? Did they raise half cash prizes where it's like a third cash or something? Like a three quarter cash? But I do need to stop getting a little greedy. Like I am going to buy a second marketplace, which normally we don't do. Because I remember like Peninsula very well for whatever reason. I was just struggling to get that last bit of money. I had to practice it and everything. But I think with this, like we're doing pretty well. Even if I have to use abilities, like it's not the worst thing in the world. I could alk buff him and make it really good. But I know I'm going to get too greedy here because on 50, we're going to struggle a little bit, but we're not going to lose. We're just going to lose a little bit of time. But now I feel good. So I am going to alk buff. I think this will reach hopefully. And it did. Cool, cool, cool. And we'll use Sada right now because I'm about to lose. That was actually really stupid. Okay, good, good. How do we get so overwhelmed right there? It's because the, oh, the ceramics. Okay, and we are just using like an, a triple guns. Like we're doing pretty dumb things right now. So I understand. I remember a while back, someone said you don't profit on farms on half catch. It's not worth going for it. Might as well just buy better towers. But we are in fact highly profiting because it only costs like five grand, I think, to do this thing. 
like maybe six or seven. I, I could be a little bit off, but it doesn't matter because we've already made almost three grand with this one. And this one has made $4,400. So we will come out on top with this plus profit. And my goal here is to get an elite defender because it can handle 63. It might not be the best or the smoothest, but we can afford it. I'm pretty sure, which is nice. And can I not do this? What's going on? What's oh, the alchemist. Yeah, the alchemist has always let me down with that stuff. Okay, so we need $15,000 and I have 10,000 here and then another thousand. See, we have enough to buy it right now. Like we can just do it now, which I don't want to have to do that. So I'm hoping we can do other things here. Like for instance, I'm gonna sell this. No, I shouldn't sell this one yet, huh? Cause I don't have lead popping still. So I'm actually gonna use my ability on the first rush here just to do that. And then I'm gonna sell this one, sell this one. It's still not enough. So I'll just sell one. Okay, now we still have a farm, which is nice. Oh my gosh, is that enough? Is it not long enough of a map? Oh my goodness, I didn't even think about this. I didn't even think about this. What am I doing? Sell, 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 sell. Okay, sell, 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 sell. Okay, I had to do that. That was insane. I, what was what just happened? We didn't lose. I was about to hit home if I had to, but that was just really scary. So it's kind of insane. We keep getting like tossed the lead balloons because our only lead popping at this point is this sniper unless we use Sada's ability because the alchemist is just terrible. So what I'm trying to do here is just buy more acidic mixture dips and then just have this guy constantly buffed. If he can always have that thing rolling with him, which I think we can do with like three more of them or so, then we'll never have a problem. He's popping ceramics faster, Moab's faster because of this. I think this is the way to do it. I mean, looking back, I should have just went Crosso Master, sold everything up front. I was just trying to get greedy and stay greedy since, but we didn't have to hit home and we didn't lose. So already right there, I thought for a second I was gonna lose cause I always just like freeze up. You don't see me on this end, but I'm just like frozen there. Just like what's going on. And then I actually instinctively hit the ability for Sada. I, her leaping sword attack, whatever you want to call this one, the super fast one. I didn't even mean to hit that. And I'm so, so glad that I did. It was just a panic push. So on 76, I don't even want to mess with that. I don't think he can clean it up good enough. So we'll just do this. Now this thing should be always up. I should see acidic mixture dip at all times. And cause we have five total now. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. It'll get the job done. Okay, so I put down some Moab assassins and I really think it's super satisfying to watch the sniper just clean up like he's gonna loop. I love that, that little loop back over. It's probably one of the most satisfying maps for this. But I'm hoping we can take this thing out quick here, use the sword ability, and then as soon as it opens up, do this one and we should be clean. I know we're gonna beat it, just ah, that wasn't as fast as I'd like, but it is half cash and we went relatively fast for it being one of the worst game modes to ever exist in the humanity of balloons. So there we go. And now we're just gonna have Sada for the alternate balloon rounds and we're still good to go. It's just that simple. We have camo covered, so we just need lead. I kind of want to go back on what I said and use a, a druid for this. This druid's such a solid tower in the beginning of alternate balloon rounds, but at the same time, sniper's not bad. It's just round 24 is kind of awful. I think for the first camo lead, I'll just use Sada just because I don't want to spend any money. I feel like we're doing pretty well with our farms already. Put that one in there perfectly, I love that. And then where is it, where is it, where is it? Right there, boom, there we go. I took it out behind the scenes even while I was trying to get one of these farms going, I love it. And now I don't know when another one's gonna be coming, so I think it'd be a solid idea to get a wizard because the wizard's just a good tower. Now, of course the wizard does not like to actually pop purple balloons or you know lead in general because it'll just pull up the fire at the last second, but I think we can work with what we got. I would like to get Dragon's Breath before I start upgrading to more farms. So I know usually I start farming like crazy, but if we have Dragon's Breath, we're pretty much solid until 40. Yeah, that's pretty good. I I'm happy with that. I don't know what to do with the first Moab. I guess we'll just take it out slowly because I should have bought in a farm or something. I just want to summon Phoenix like kind of early. I think that'll be a better tower here. So I'm just going to kind of eat it. I know it's, oh, it's fortified. Dude, you're so stupid. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's do this. And then we will um, clean it up with one of these. There we go, let's just do that. Oh my God, that was so stupid. Okay, let's just buy this one now. I didn't even think about that. So I do need to farm more. It's alternate balloon round, so everything's alternate, which means absolutely nothing other than the fact that things are harder than they should be. <laughs> so that's not good. So I think we're gonna have a fortified BFB, right? Or no, don't we get BFBs even earlier? Oh, we get Moabs earlier. Okay, I totally forgot about that too. Okay, Phoenix everything then, jeez Louise. So I need to follow the same pattern as before then. And by that, I mean, I need to get a flying fortress pretty quickly here. And the reason why is because we're gonna have two ZOMGs at the end instead of one, and then we're gonna have a fortified ZOMG, right? If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So we need to get moving on this thing. 
So I have two Summon Phoenix as my main powerhouse here, and then I am gonna start farming a little bit. I just needed to get rid of the sub, so that's why I wanted two Phoenixes, because the sub was not getting those extra pops from the Monkeyopolis thing. So it's best to have them all up front like this. Now I'm just relying on Phoenixes other than like buying anything that I should actually be getting. I'm kind of being dumb here, but I feel like if we have farms, we'll make money faster. So it's a little better of an idea in my opinion. Cause I think at this point last time we already had a Spectre before I got my second farm, but who cares? We have a Phoenix here to do like half the work for us. They even do a pretty good job at taking out the Fortifieds. And then if I use it right when the other one ends, they're not like perfect timing, but they're pretty solid. Yeah, cause actually, is it though? Two of them are pretty much coincided with each other. That's really good. And what's cool is already at round 66, I can sell all this junk and then buy my Flying Fortress, buy my village back with the faster one. Oh, not in range, goofy. All right, let's get rid of this guy. I want my other guys to be in range if they can. So like that, there we go, cool. Now my next question is, should I stick with Sada for Impoppable or switch to Ben? The Ben's gonna be an extra switch because then I gotta switch back to Sada for chimps. But if I just stay with Sada, we won't get as money as fast, but then at the same time, who cares? Once you get the Flying Fortress, you're good. And if we can get it by 70 or 80 like this, then you're already in the clear. Like, I think we'll get it by 80. Yeah, 80 regardless. I'm gonna hope this, I always forget first strike. And if I can make it work, then that's super fast on 80. We don't have to do any work. If I can do it, time it right, let's do it. There we go. Oh, but there's two of them because it's ugh, stupid. I always forget alternate blue rounds. I am going to keep Sada though. I think it's just a better plan because we are on the cusp of making like a top time and I don't want to mess it up by switching back and forth or forgetting to switch. And that's totally a possibility. And she can just eat up the beginning for us and make it super simple. So we put it right there and hit play. And now we have the first few rounds covered just like that. Here's my early game defense. I think we could go a little faster by putting tax up front to keep literally every balloon off the screen, but this is a safe way to start farming because I still believe that impoppable, the battle's the end, not the beginning. We just gotta get through the beginning as quickly as we sort of can. So then we can just have big bad apexes and flying fortresses and spiked mines to take care of those final rounds so we don't have to worry about nothing and it's fast. I think this is a really solid spot to be in. Four farms up to a 2-0-0 before 36, because 36 will give us troubles if I don't buy something else and I stop getting greedy. I don't even have airburst starts yet, but I think we can handle it because we will get it, hopefully. Actually, I'm used to having bins in around cash. We might not actually get it, but we have four, four farms. I mean, that's really good. And then that should cover that. Oh yeah, that's so fine. Oh my goodness, so easy. And we'll even buy this one too. Let's just do it. Now we got a true blue team right here. That'd be really cool is if I could get a marketplace before 40. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, maybe like when all those bananas start flying out at the end or the beginning of 40, that could happen. But we'll take what we can get just because we're moving along pretty well without a Benjamin. See, there we go. Almost close. Almost. Here's where I'm going to call like a little bit of an audible here from what we've been used to doing. I'm going to get a balloon jitsu. An alchemist right on top of the Bloon Jitsu. Now this should handle the Moabs on its own, even without all this lead stuff and all this other stuff. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy my Flying Fortress. No, 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 sorry, sorry, wrong tower. Okay, it did, it took it out, that's all we needed. I'm gonna buy my Monkey Town, right? Okay, cool. And then now that we have all this extra money coming in, I need to get rid of the submarine. But first I gotta do all this stuff. First I gotta play the game of this. There we go, now we got our thing going, we're good. And now I'm gonna buy this guy because he's really good. We'll sell all this junk here and now we have a summon phoenix. Now we should handle pretty much all the rounds while we start getting our farms up. We need, uh, I think like three or four of them here because we're not going to 80, we're going to 100. There's our first one. I did not expect to be using the fire phoenix like this but it's just a really good tower. I really, I really respect it right now. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna buy another one of these things because I just want another Phoenix. I think they're so good to have. And if I can keep them both going like apart from each other, I think it's so cool because they'll just all run the game on their own. So like the first rush of 63, we'll send a Phoenix out. And then by the time this one goes away, we'll use the second Phoenix. And there it is, there it is right there. That is so simple. I don't know, we might hit a new record. I think the summon Phoenix is really like a secret key right now. This thing is just wrecking through. And the fact that we have two of them just lets us keep doing it over and over and over. And I could easily sell everything right now and have a flying fortress, no problem. 
But I'm thinking because we're still not seeing any balloons or moabs and we're keeping everything at bay, I'm gonna try to go as farm as much as I can. Cause then I could buy like a perma brew. I could buy an actual wizard lord phoenix. I'll have so much money to buy whatever I want here to make this the fastest run we've ever seen. And just like that, there's our flying fortress. That is so awesome. Oh my goodness, Wizard Lord Phoenix, Perma Brew, and a Flying Fortress, and we still have over 100 grand just chilling here with all this stuff. This is what I'm talking about. Let's actually just get rid of, I don't know. Actually, let's just do what I want to do from the beginning. Let's just get it real stupid here. We'll put this one right there, and we'll sell all this stuff, all of it, because we don't need it no more, and we just, oh, 150 grand for that? Jeez. And there it is. Now we have super mines even. That's ridiculous. But what I'm having trouble seeing here though, is our top time is cubism at two hours and 16 minutes. Was it recorded wrong? Cause I have made zero mistakes. Actually we made one mistake and we let the balloons kind of go through a little bit on half cash, but I guarantee you they went farther on cubism than they did this one. And I don't think we can beat chimps in 15 minutes. So how are we going to do that? Now sulfur springs, that makes sense. Cause you have a whole sulfur springs is a beginner map because you have all of this twice before it even goes down the track, which is just pure insanity. Look how fast Sada's going with like Permabrew and like being nearly max level. She's kind of ridiculous right now. This is pretty cool. And then for 99 into the 100, we can use the Phoenix there. And then on 100, we'll use our first strike. And there we go. It, easy done, so we're at two hours into Chimso. That's not bad at all. Now, what I need to do here is think of the best way to do this. I don't even know fully what I want to do yet other than just use Sada because she's the best. Oh shoot, we don't have anything. We might have to actually like let a balloon sacrifice and go across the track. I forget that you have zero money when you start. No monkey knowledge is a weird thing, man. It is weird. So definitely a sub then, because we can at least clean up and then he shoots his sub bullets like that way. And so it's not like the worst mess. The sub's just such a great tower for early game. Even if it's not keeping everything at bay at the beginning of the screen, like it's just so good because you have the double hit, so it hits here and it hits here. It's a good cleanup because it can attack on its own. It can attack camo because she can attack camo. Yeah, her hit range box is a little small, so if it misses, it goes past it, but honestly, it doesn't matter. And what's great is just a 202 can hold you off for such a long while. Like we can go with air burst starts while we focus on our next power tower. Now, I wanted to use the chopper for the lead. I just don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, no way, we're not gonna have, that's like $1,800 plus the quad darts, plus the pursuit. That's just asking for trouble, to be honest. So we need to do something else for lead. Let's just use Sada for 28 and see what happens with that. So we'll use her and it's, yeah, it's not gonna be enough. No, 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 no. So we're gonna have to still use a sniper, unfortunately. I don't want to, actually, yeah, we're gonna use a sniper. Okay, we're gonna do it. Dude, what are you doing? Don't be dumb. Okay, use Sada. I didn't want the sniper there either. I, that's kind of a panic play, but it'll work. Okay, so now I got my real lead popper right here. The quad dart, razor rotor dude. He's the man. He's gonna do everything that he can. And then my tower that I want to use is this one. This is what I want to be my strong tower. I'm gonna go with an old school strategy that I used to use back in the day. And this is how I used to run chimps. I used to go with an arcane spike into the arc mage and then i would get an apache prime and i felt so cool about it. i thought i was the coolest guy in the world because it worked it worked every single time it's such a great combo because the arcane spike just pretty much shreds through all the moab class like super super easy it has great range i am gonna add a village but guess where i'd want the village right here where the stupid snipers i messed up on that one for sure oh actually i hit them all is that everybody yeah okay i'd rather have sada in too but i just know it's not gonna hit even though it's touching it and if I went with the bigger radius, it still wouldn't do it. So we'll just go with this one instead. Poor Sada. And then we'll, now he has a huge range. Look at that. So now I got to decide, do I want to go with Archmage first or Apache Dart Shit? Now Archmage has been known in the past to like not beat 63 for me. It kind of like just ruins it. And Apache Dart Ship can guarantee 63 and both of them together are very strong. So we'll keep them at the front of the screen. So I'm Apache Dart Ship is the answer, but then do we go with Apache Prime? Cause that's a long ways of money and losing balloons or do we go with Archmage first? That's, that's the question. Apache Prime will get us through the nineties, but Archmage won't. So maybe Apache Prime first. I almost said halfway there because we went over round 50, but I think it's kind of like RuneScape where like RuneScape 
half of the experience to get to level 99 if you've ever played that game there's a lot of grinding is like on level 91 so the experience it takes to get from 92 to like 99 is the same amount of experience to get you from 1 to 99 which is purely insanity and i think that's the same with balloons like obviously round 1 to 50 is gonna be a lot quicker than 50 to 100 so i want to know what round is it is it round i would guess like round 75 to 100 is the same amount of time from 1 to 75 right that sounds like a good little bit there see we're keeping everything at bay pretty well i'm happy with it and i i want to see 63 i'm curious Sada will be level 10 by 63 too, which is really nice. And that's not the slowest. It's it's not the fastest, but it's not the slowest. So that's good. That's something. And then for that last one, we'll see Sada's ability gets around 64 really quickly. And we'll go now. There we go. 64. This is what I was worried about. The grind to get to the $48,600 for the Apache Prime. Just because you're going to move slow in between that. Like right now it's quick because it's just balloons. So if it's, if it's balloons, we're fast. But it's those Moabs and those BFBs that are actually like stalling us. We've gone to this far at this point and I, I just don't like that. That's just not good. So we really need to get this one quicker, the Apache Prime. But then I have to buy a Monkey Intelligence Bureau so we can pop the DDTs and then I have to hope that the Archmage is going to be strong enough. So I don't know if the Archmage is the best choice, but at this point I'm going to commit because we already spent money on the Arcane Spike. I wouldn't have bought it unless I was going for it. But he has good pops. So I mean, we can't complain, right? And let's use Sada to try to clean this up a little quicker because this is going to take forever. All right, there it is. There we go. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to start running with the wolves. We really need to take these out faster. Like the ZOMGs are so slow. I'm wondering if I should have gone with the Phoenix instead. Not that we would have gotten like all the way to the Wizard Lord Phoenix, because that's a very expensive tower, but maybe we could have at least kept using the Phoenix to speed this up. And maybe we'd already be at like round 92 by now. We could have done some major damage. Because now I'm afraid if I buy the Archmage this late in the game, I thought we'd have had it by like 85 or so with the Apache Prime. We're not going to have enough for good towers. And so I'm kind of taking a risk on this Archmage, like a really big risk, because it might not be enough for 95 since it's a short map. Here's our first DDTs. I see what they look like okay that wasn't too bad so if we had archmage i think 95 wouldn't be the worst thing in the world all right there it is there's archmage okay now he should start like really spreading his wings and getting those pops on there and i'm gonna get a glue gunner to slow things down for us one two three four like this get relentless even here's because here's 95 i'm a little worried about it but if we have archmage we should be okay dude what the heck it's that good okay we are in a beginner map i don't know what i was thinking but i'm just you never know you never know that's the whole thing and then what i want to do here is i I do want to get a shattering shells because what's great about the apache prime is it can take down the bad so we don't have to worry about like oh my gosh we're gonna have a popping power any any garbage like that but can it take down these a little faster yeah of course it could that's why i think that having this would be amazing if we had shattering shells oh but it's already too late oh my gosh is it even worth it at this point i think so i think i'm still gonna get it just because i like to commit okay so there we go we got our shattering shells and now i would like to get a first strike I don't think we can afford it. No, we're not gonna be able to afford it. Who cares? Just roll with it. Oh my goodness. Okay, just use Sada's abilities. Get out of here with this. The Archmage is a really good tower. He still has a good amount of pops there. And then once it opens up, we're gonna use our ability just because I don't want to mess with DDT. Oh, just forget about it. Just do it. Go, 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 Sada. You got this. Clean it up. Everybody clean it up. There we go. We're done. What is our time? Let's go home. We'll go with this one. Immediate backwards. Close. Close. 21840. Oh my goodness, it is second place. That is in fact second place after Cubism. We got end of the road and I don't know why. Why was it slower? I'm still very, very happy. We're two minutes behind though. We are two minutes and seven seconds behind our top time. And I don't know why besides half cash was a little slow and chimps was a little slow. We could have gone faster. I'm still happy with that time. I think it's great. It's our new second place and we still have logs and four circles to get our fastest time ever. But who knows? Even Sulphur Springs was our second place time, not far behind our top time. So any map could be our best map yet, even Park Path. Who knows? Even Cracked might be our top time. There's so many options here. It's insane. But we're level 124 now and I'm just going to keep going after all of the militaries until we finish off this tree. I just can't believe how long it takes to get all the monkey knowledge. It's never going to stop. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more from this series, definitely check out the last one where we found out how fast we could black border balance in Bloons TD6.